so today's video is a really, really fun one. We are gonna be doing our makeup with a few vintage beauty products that you can still buy to this day. I'm talking makeup that came out in the 30s, the 50s, the 70s, the 90s. We're taking it way back and we're gonna talk all things vintage beauty and do this kind of like 90s inspired makeup look with all of those products. And I am so, so excited. I had so much fun filming this video. But before we get into this video, I would like to give a huge thank you to Native for sponsoring this video. I know I've recently talked about Native's new hair care line, but I have been using their deodorants for years now. So I was so excited to work with them. I love this brand so much. And the best part is that they're aluminum free and paraben free. I haven't used a deodorant with aluminum in it in years. I completely stay away from aluminum in my deodorants. And in my personal opinion, after trying so many different brands, Native to me is hands down the best aluminum free deodorant. I have yet to find another aluminum free deodorant that keeps me smelling fresh as long as Native. And I love that they've improved the plastic free packaging. Ever since I found out that Native gave you the option to buy their deodorants in a plastic free container, those are the ones I've been purchasing for months and months and months. But they've actually improved the packaging and I feel like it's easier to use now. This this is their older plastic free packaging. It was more in like the cylinder tube, which honestly still worked really great for me. I've purchased their deodorant in this packaging so many times, but their new and improved packaging is really, really nice and just so easy to use. And I honestly love that Native offers like 100% plastic free packaging because it just makes you feel like you really are helping the planet even if it's just a little bit. It's like one less plastic thing in my house, you know? And I mean, it's still their great, amazing formula just with more sustainable packaging, so why not? And what's really, really nice is that they're committing 1% of plastic free deodorant sales to environmental nonprofits, which is great. And like I said, the, besides all of that, the formula is incredible. They have amazing scents. Vanilla and coconut is my ride or die scent at Native. They're, it's my number one scent in the shampoo, in the deodorant. I love it so much. Cucumber and mint is also a really, really nice one if you prefer a fresh scent versus like a sweet scent, even though this is not like too sweet, but cute. Oh, this one's great. Cucumber mint is really, really nice if you want that fresh, like out of the shower really really clean smell and shout out to Stephanie Harlow okay for putting me on to their cherry and vanilla macaroon scent absolutely life-changing and this one is actually part of their sensitive range which their sensitive deodorants don't have baking soda in them so if you are sensitive to baking soda check out their sensitive range they have a ton of different scents I mean you cannot go wrong with native deodorant okay and of course I have a coupon code for you guys it is Kathleen lights I'm gonna put it here for you guys on the screen and you can save some money because normally if you get three plastic free deodorants that would normally cost you $39 but if you use my code you'll get them for $26 which is over 33% off and with my code you can actually save 20% off on all of their body wash or toothpaste so definitely check out native if you've been looking for an amazing aluminum free deodorant and so yeah without further ado let's get on with the video let's talk all things vintage beauty. Okay, so I was originally inspired to do this video because of Glamzilla on TikTok. Literally everything I do now is because of TikTok. But she was recently talking about the Black Honey Clinique lipstick that's been around for years and years and years. And it recently like went viral on TikTok like a year ago or something. But I thought it was just so interesting that Clinique has kept this lipstick around for so long that it made me like dig into some other products that have been around for a really long time and that you can still get today, which I think is just so cool. So Clinique actually launched their Black Honey Lipstick in a pot in 1971. 1971, but it was a little bit more glossy and then they reformulated it in 1989 And that is the lipstick that is still being sold till today Which is incredible to think about because there are not many beauty products on the market that have been around that long And I honestly think it's going so viral recently because colors like this are so popular right now where it's a sheer color but, but very shiny and in a lipstick form. It's kind of like a hybrid of a lipstick and a gloss, but very, very sheer. And it looks really crazy in the tube right here. But you can see when I swatch it, it's a really like, such a beautiful shade. It's like a very, very, very sheer black cherry almost. Really, really stunning. And what makes this lipstick so wonderful is that it fits pretty much everyone's skin tone. I have yet to see this look bad on someone. It looks beautiful on super fair skin and super deep skin, which is probably why it's been around for so long. So yeah, after I saw Glamzilla talk about this product, I immediately bought it and thought, hmm, 
It would be fun to dedicate an entire video to beauty products that came out before I was born and that are still around, which is super rare. I don't have many products to talk about today, but the few that I'm gonna talk about, you guys are definitely gonna recognize. Some of these have been cult favorites on YouTube for many, many years, and it's no wonder they've been around for so long. So yeah, this is gonna be a fun get ready with me and we can talk about beauty and makeup from back in the day. I love this kind of thing. I'm a sucker for nostalgia and the past. Boy, do I love the past. <laughs> really quickly, I'm just gonna throw some foundation on my face. I've already primed my face with my Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. And I'm going in with the Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint. I freaking love this so much. Every single time I wear this, somebody compliments my skin. The other day I was in the office and my sister was like, what is on your face? It's so beautiful. What was this? For concealer, I'm gonna use my Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue Concealer. A holy grail favorite, of course. I love this concealer so much. This one and the Il Maquillage Fuck I'm Flawless Concealer, these are like my top two concealers right now. When I want a more full coverage look, something a little bit thicker, more glam, I go for this one, even though it's not like, it's not thick like Tarte Shape Tape. It's a little bit more blendable, but still gives that glam look. And then my Il Maquillage Concealer is perfect for every day, and I could build that one up, and it's good stuff. Okay, so next up, I'm going in with a cult beauty product. You have definitely heard of this. This product has been booming on YouTube since I've been on YouTube back in 2013. I feel like everyone was using this when I first started and this puppy actually launched the year I was born. YSL launched their Touche Clot Radiant Touch pen in 1992. So these puppies have been selling for the past 30 years, which is insane. But the evolution of this product is actually pretty cool. When it first launched, they only launched one shade. It was supposed to be like a radiant pen. Now it's more of like a concealer pen, but when it first launched in 1992, it was more like a highlighter pen. And now I believe they have a few different shades. Like mine is in the shade 2.5. And funny story, uh, actually not funny. <laughs> The crazy thing about this product, I don't know if that's still the case today, but I was reading an article where I was talking about how much this product sells even today, 30 years later. I believe every minute, like six of these are sold. Six Touche Clots every minute. And to be honest, my personal opinion, I don't necessarily think it's worth the money. I mean, it is a really beautiful product and you can see that it's really brightening my under eyes and it blends so easily into the skin. It is a beautiful product. It's just very, very pricey and I believe there are so many products on the market today that do similar things for a cheaper price, but it is a nice product. It is very lovely. It really does brighten up the face and it has such a thin formula that it just blends into anything. And you do get a little bit of coverage, which is nice. This kind of product is perfect for like your no makeup makeup days, summertime, springtime, when you want a fresh under eye look that's gonna like awaken and brighten and not uh, look too cakey or heavy. You can kinda see it's like, you know, it's minimal, but it's there. Okay, so really quickly, I'm gonna jump off camera and apply some eyeshadows from this palette that's gonna launch in like a few months, I don't know. Be right back. All right, it's mascara time, which, can you guys guess what mascara I'm gonna talk about? You probably already know if you saw the thumbnail, but of course, we are gonna talk about the Maybelline Great Lash Mascara that's been around for Ever. 1971 was a big year for beauty, okay? Clinique launched a Black Honey, Maybelline launched their Great Lash Mascara, and this has been around ever since. 1971 was a long time ago. <laughs> and it was so interesting to read about this when I was like searching it up, because Maybelline has been around for so many years, and I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Cake Mascara, I'm gonna throw up a picture of it, but Maybelline started selling their Cake Mascara in 1932. Our parents weren't even born, and I know it was a different time back then of course but that mascara was sold for 10 cents and it was a huge hit before the cake mascara like went viral for those times um, women were putting Vaseline on their lashes to really enhance them because Vaseline has been around since like 1925 or something like that women used to add some Vaseline to the lashes to really enhance them which is so funny to think about now with so many mascaras and so so many options, we are so spoiled. But yeah, so in 1971, the Great Lash Mascara was born. And I'm sure you guys have seen this little pink and green tube since you were kids. I mean, I saw this bad boy so many times in high school. Everybody had this in their purse. And they actually say that this mascara is one of the most recognized beauty products 
in history. And of course, so many of these beauty products have had like a packaging revamp. I'm actually gonna throw up a picture of the original Great Lash if I can find it, or at least like a vintage one that I saw online the other day because it didn't used to look like this, although it's always been pink and green. And even though this mascara isn't necessarily for me, it's not my favorite, I still think the story behind it is so cool and interesting and it's nice to have this mascara in my collection just as a beauty lover in general and actually I bought this on Amazon and I think I got a pretty dry crusty one because I've used the Great Lash Mascara before like I've had this in my possession in the past I just had to buy it for this video but I've used it before and this one's pretty dry oh my god this is like falling in chunks this is so dry <laughs> what is that oh my god no I can't what I can't even put this on I can't I can't put this on little hard balls are falling all over my face <gasps> that's what she said I 100% purchased an old one because it's like not not happening. It feels like I bought one from 1971. <laughs> it's so dry. Okay, so I actually forgot to powder my under eyes, which is probably the oldest product in this video, which I'm sure you guys already know the powder, but before I do that. I want to give a shout out to this foundation and I accidentally bought a shade that doesn't match me. That's the problem of buying things on Amazon. But I mainly wanted to give this product a shout out because word on the street is this was Jackie Kennedy's favorite foundation, which I thought that was just so, so cool to know. But this is the Elizabeth Arden Flawless Finish Sponge On Cream Makeup and I got mine in the shade Perfect Beige, which I could honestly contour with. This is like too deep for me. And I'm not exactly sure what year this foundation launched, but we know Jackie Kennedy was wearing it in 1995. So it's been around for almost 30 years. But apparently she was using this foundation all the time to cover up blemishes on her skin. I'm actually gonna see how it looks as a cream, cream contour, just so we can slap it on and say, you know, say we used it. That is cool toned. Why did I think I was this color? Okay, that, that kind of served a purpose. Actually, before I go in with my face powder, I do have one more face product to put on. We gotta throw on some blush, folks. And I know all of you guys know this little guy right here. This is the ever so famous Benefit Benetint, which is so exciting to see like a Benefit product because I've worked with Benefit a few times, like back in the day when I first started my YouTube channel and I met so many of the people that worked there and they were so sweet and it's so crazy to think that Benefit has been around for so many years. It's definitely one of the OG beauty brands and this has been like one of their most popular famous products that they've ever done. So this is their lip and cheek stain and you can see it's like a deep, deep, deep red shade. It literally looks like blood. And their original bottle had like a rose shaped cap because it's supposed to be like a rose colored stain. And what's extra cool about this product is that it, it's actually the first product benefit ever launched. So the fact that they still have it around is pretty amazing and it was launched in 1976. So we have had Benefits Benetint since 1976. And fun fact, I actually didn't know about this until I was reading up <laughs> on it. This product was originally made as a nipple tint for the exotic dancers in their little shop in San Francisco. So it was, it was originally meant to like darken their nipples <laughs> and like stain them and make them look like a nice deeper rosy color. <laughs> Which I mean makes sense because this bitch is a tint. This shit is powerful. This is the most tinted lip and cheek stain I have ever used. Like the most powerful one. Makes total sense why it's still around because this shit is powerful. And truly all you need is a little, little, little bit. And if I'm gonna be completely honest with you, if you don't know how to apply this, not if you don't know how to apply this, that sounds like mean. If you aren't careful, Applying this, it will look crazy. You will like have a dot, like a stain on your cheek. You have to apply this very quickly and very carefully. The best way, in my opinion, to put this on is with a damp sponge, and I'll show you in a second. But if you're not into that, if you're like, I'm not gonna stain my sponge, cause this one, this kind of stains your sponge a bit, as you can see right there. If you don't wanna do that, I recommend your fingers. I do not recommend a brush, because a brush, it just won't blend the product so well, and it, like it honestly needs like the heat of your fingers to really work work into the skin and look seamless and not patchy because like I said, this stuff is powerful. You know what this reminds me of? Do you guys watch True Blood? Well, not watch True Blood, that, <laughs> that show hasn't been on in like a decade. God, I miss that show, I love that show. But this reminds me of V. You know like in the show, I'm not giving any spoilers even though the show is a decade old, but in the show they have like little vials of vampire blood and they call it V. It's like a really intense drug in the show. Like one drop of V 
and you're like hallucinating, okay? Like it is very, very intense. And that's what this is. Like you only need one drop of V, like one drop of this vampire blood to really feel the intensity and to see the intensity, okay? Too much and you'll regret it. So I'm gonna show you how I like to apply the Benefit Benetint. So I just wet my Lunar Beauty sponge. I love this one for like cream blush. And this is gonna be like really intense for some of you and a lot of you are gonna be like, no. But I literally just like rub this on my sponge and then apply directly on my face. And the water in the sponge really helps like diffuse the blush and not um, have it be like so intense. It like helps me blend it a little bit more. It doesn't dry as quickly, you know? So I just take my V. <laughs> Rub it on this, literally like that, like that, like that. Looks crazy, what are you doing? Oh my God, Kathleen. Yeah, and I just go in like that and start to blend that on the cheeks. This is my favorite way to do this because if I don't do it like this, my cheeks can get clowny very fast. I just tap it on and then blend it with my finger because if not, I go around the edges. Like I said, it almost needs the warmth of your fingers to really blend into the skin and not leave like streak marks on your face. If you are just starting out with cream blushes or like liquid blushes, tinted blushes, you might wanna be careful. You might want to tread lightly with this one and test it out, see how you feel, because I've always like struggled with this product, although I love it and it looks so beautiful and I love the history behind it. Like, yes, tint those nibbles. I'm telling you, fingers, the way to go, because even with that sponge, I'd be struggling. The good thing about that product though, is even though it gives you a lot of anxiety to apply to your face, it stays on your face for three days. I did two, but I meant three days. It's a tint, all right. You know what? I'm gonna try it on my nipples. Not directly. Well, I mean, why not directly? Nobody else uses this tint. Is that weird to apply this directly to my nipples? The Aquarius in me says no. Okay, fine, I'll put it on my finger and then I'll apply it to my nipples because I feel you guys judging me already. Look at this, it's literally blood. All right, let's see. Okay, I'm looking in the mirror and I'm comparing my nipples right now. And to be honest, it looks like I was breastfeeding and my baby took a bite out of my nipple and it's bleeding a little bit. I mean, it, it worked, but I don't know if I love this color like on my nipple. And you know what? It's not even staining my shirt. Good stuff. Okay, so I don't typically powder my face anymore because I have the driest skin ever and the older I get, the less I use powder. But I couldn't do a vintage makeup video without including the Cody Airspun powder that has been around since 1935. It's literally right there on the packaging. And it's a really cool story because this brand was actually founded by Francis Cody in Paris in 1904. So this... <laughs> That's, that's a long time. My grandparents weren't even born. So they've been around for literally ever and this powder was launched in 1935 and it's been a cult favorite forever. I remember being on YouTube back in the day, 2013 days, even before, before I started YouTube, so many people were talking about this powder because it is honestly one of the most affordable powders you can get right now. You can get it at the drugstore for literally just a few dollars and it's so massive. You get so much product. This has been a drugstore beauty fave for so, so long and it comes with a little puff but I threw my puff away and I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> this powder. <laughs> Smells like 1935, you know what I mean? Not that it smells old, like, oh, this is an old crusty powder. No, it just, it smells what I picture a woman's vanity smelling like in 1935. Like if all her products were open, her lipsticks, her compacts, her powders, like if everything was just open and I was just sitting there in 1935, just like in inhaling the, the, Air. This is what it would smell like. This is what it would smell like. My sensitive ass nostrils can't handle it, but besides the scent, you know what? It's a pretty freaking decent powder. I'm gonna add some powder underneath my eyes, around my nose, and I'm just gonna set the skin. This is a super intense powder, by the way. It's not heavy or cakey or anything, but it is very, very mattifying, and I have so many like oily skin friends that swear by this powder, and it keeps them matte all day without looking cakey or dry <laughs> with the way this smells. I'm like shocking over here, I'm shocking. Oh, you know, you can't have it all. Can't have it all. So yeah, shout out to the Cody Airspun Loose Face Powder in Translucent that has been changing the game for many, 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 many years. And fun fact, this formula really hasn't been changed since 19 1935. It's pretty much like the same 
powder. Okay, so we are finally going in with our lip product. Of course, I'm gonna throw on the Clinique Black Honey Lipstick, what inspired this whole video. But I do wanna mention another lipstick that's been around for a very long time. This was very, very popular on YouTube as well. This is the Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick in the shade Cherries in the Snow, which is a lipstick that Revlon has been selling since 1953. And um, I know it recently kind of like blew up again because it was mentioned in that Amazon show, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, I believe that's the name of it. I saw like the first three episodes and you know I didn't love it. My friend Stephanie dies over that show. She loves it so much and I couldn't get into it. I don't know why. It seems like my kind of show, which is weird. But anyway, I believe the marvelous Mrs. Maisel wears this lipstick in the show, which makes sense for the time period. There's something in my eye. But this is a really, really beautiful classic, like pink red. It honestly reminds me of the 50s just by looking at it. Like I honestly see so many women back in the day wearing this type of red. It's not necessarily like my kind of red. I prefer more orangey reds over pink reds, but it's still such a stunning color and perfect for so many different skin tones. They said like uh, for the decade, like in the 50s, this was the most iconic lipstick of the decade, which is insane, super affordable, really, really beautiful. And even if I don't wear this shade, I love having it in my collection because it's just like so iconic and classic and it's been around since 1953. So it should tell you something. But I'm gonna go in with Clinique Black Honey Lipstick that is so universally beautiful and flattering and I just love shades like this right now. These kinds of juicy, wet lip colors are really, really, really getting popular and I'm all about it. But I am gonna throw on a lip liner underneath first. I'm gonna take my Eau Maquillage and Carly Bible collab. This one is called Luna and I'm just gonna line my lips really quick. Okay, so I've got a little 90s lip going right now, a little 90s ombre lip and I'm just gonna fill in my lips with Clinique Black Honey. Look at that. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, it reminds me so much of Black Cherry because it's like a really, really, really deep red. Stunning, love that shade so, so much. It's like the perfect holiday red, perfect for the fall, the winter time. Probably not perfect for right now while we're in the middle of summer, but I know I'm gonna use this so much in the fall. And it doesn't have like a scent. It's pretty scentless. Doesn't smell like anything, which I love. And then that completes the full makeup look. But I do wanna mention one other product. It's not a makeup product, but it's still a beauty product. It's my little honorable mention because I used to use this bad boy all the time. I know you guys have seen this on YouTube for so, so many years. This is the L'Oreal Elnit Satin Hairspray. This thing has been around forever. It's a super stronghold, super intense hairspray that people have been using on like runways and like shows for decades now. Only now you can get the unscented hairspray versus back in the day when it first came out, it wasn't unscented. The scented one is so strong, it smells really, really, really intense. But people still used it and loved it because it was just such a good hairspray. Really, really strong hold and doesn't give you like that like crusty flakes. And I don't know, I just wanted to mention this because I recently got this in PR and I was like, oh my God, this is perfect for this video because this hairspray was launched in 1960. I don't even know how many years that is. Uh, like 60 years, right? Uh oh, mathematics, right? Cause I mean, if I was born 1992 and it's been 30 years, that means 1962 was 60 years. This has been around as long as my dad has. Like it was, it came out the same year my dad was born. So this has been a cult classic, a favorite for many, many, many years. And so I just wanted to throw that in there to give it, to, throw that in there to give it a shout out because that's pretty insane. Pretty impressive. But okay guys, that completes this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was very different from videos that I've done in the past, but I thought it would be so cool to kind of go through beauty products that launched over 30 years ago, but you can still get them today because that's just so cool, so rare. I don't know, I hope this video was entertaining in some way. It was really, really fun for me to gather all these products. I love vintage makeup and stories like this and learning about this kind of thing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And honestly, really, really love the look. This is super, super 90s for me. Like the rosy cheek, the deep lips, the matte browns on the eyes. A very 90s inspired look. But anyway guys, that completes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so, 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 so much. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye.